Great, so now we've been able to create our first Xcode project. And let's take a minute. First, let's open up our Xcode project so it fills up the whole screen. Xcode has a lot going on that we can see here. So the more space we have, the easier it'll be to see everything that's going on. Uh, the at first glance, there might be a ton of stuff here and it might be a little intimidating and overwhelming. But in the end, this will actually be a huge advantage because Xcode in many ways acts as a one-stop shop where we can build code, add graphical elements, and even deploy to the App Store all from this one tool. Uh, so in the long run, familiarizing yourself with this tool will have, pay off huge dividends uh, as you learn how to make iPhone applications. First, let's take an overview of what this environment we're looking at and try to demystify it a little bit. In this top left corner here, we have the run area where we can actually run a simulator of our application. And our simulator will mirror an, an iPhone or an iTouch. And we're going to be able to deploy and see what our application looks like right now. So go ahead and press the run button. And when this thing loads up, we'll be able to see that it's going to be a blank screen. And this blank screen is going to be reflective of the fact that we chose single view application as our template which meant that our application did not start with any initial uh, elements on our view, but a view was in fact hooked up, and that's this white area here. We also can press the stop button, which will start up our application from running. And if we open up our simulator again, we'll be able to see that by moving to the left area over here, we get to see that we have photos, contacts, settings. In fact, if you were going to deploy your application to uh, a foreign country uh, or another language, you could press the general button, international, and change your language. Um, so you could set your simulator to be in a different language to test that your functionality worked properly. Uh, additionally, um, it's worth noting that the simulator can get buggy from time to time, so closing it out after you're done using it is a really handy uh, tool to prevent issues. As we move to the right, in this top right area over here. The first area we're going to look at is the editor area. And the option we're going to look at today is called the assistant editor, which we'll be covering more in the next video. But for now, if you click it, we're going to be able to open up two screens side by side. And later on, what this is going to allow us to do is to open two files simultaneously. Let's go ahead and go back to the standard editor, which will show us this single view again. Uh, incidentally, for those of you who are curious, this third option over here is for version editor, uh, but we're not going to be touching on that today. In fact, if you try to open that up right now, unless you initialize your project with Git, um, it'll actually break because we don't have version control in our application right now. Uh, the next is our view toggle area, and in this left one here, we can open and close the navigator area, which is this left bar over here. We can also open the bottom area here, which by default is not open. And the left area is a debug area. We're going to be able to take a look at our objects in memory later on, for those of you who are familiar with objects. Uh, and this right area over here is where we're going to be able to print things out to our console. Uh, we're not going to be doing any of that today, so we can go ahead and close that area back up. Uh, the final area that we're going to be opening and closing is the utilities area, which is this right bar over here. Um, later on, when we have our view objects, we're going to be able to adjust the attributes of our view objects using this tab. For now, let's take a look at this left-hand area, the navigator area. We're not going to cover what all these different tabs do. I'll just quickly scroll through them so you can see that there are, in fact, a bunch of different, different tabs. For now, though, we're going to leave this folder selected, which provides a graphical way to see all of the files currently added to our project. Some of you might not be able to see all of the files that I have selected because you haven't used the drop-down. So simply click this little toggle here and you'll be able to see all of the files inside of this group supporting files as well as all the frameworks that have gone automatically included as part of our single view application. Next, let's take a look at this main area. We're not going to be adjusting anything in here today, but here we can use toggles like these buttons here for landscape left and right to choose whether or not our device or our application will be supporting landscape mode or not. In fact, it's becoming very popular for many applications to only support the portrait view. As you scroll down, you're going to see some launch images here. 
These are the images that pop up when your application first loads, as well as frameworks that have already gotten linked up. Let's open up the storyboard file from our navigator on the left here. And we can see now that there's this graphical interface which directly reflects what, was, what appeared on our simulator earlier when we ran it. In this lower right-hand area here, which is the main area on the screen that we haven't covered yet inside of Xcode, is our libraries area. And right now we have the file template library, which will allow us to drag code in and have that appear inside of our view controllers. For now, we're actually going to select the third one from the left, which is our object library. And if we scroll up and down, uh, we're going to be able to see that there's a bunch of different view objects that you might be familiar with, things like a stepper, where you can increment by one or more. You might also see image views, right? We can replace and set our image views to make images or pictures appear inside of our application. Scroll up until you find the label or scroll down depending on where you are in this list. Alternatively, you can also search for the label by going down to this bottom area here and typing in label. And drag and drop by holding down the label into your project. Make sure you move it towards the top um, there's an instance where having it towards the middle, your label might not appear when you run the simulator. We'll talk in a later video about why that's occurring. But for now, just keep your label towards the top. And you can double click on the label and replace the text with Hello World. And we can go ahead and rerun our simulator by pressing this Run button on the top left corner again. And our simulator will open and Hello World will appear.